Hi, this is Dino Brook, uh, the CTO of XP Network. Uh, today we're going to speak uh, about Substrate and how it helps us in uh, setting decentralized validators. So the first thing I'd like to uh, mention is that Substrate is like a constructor which can be used uh, to build uh, blockchains, uh, for example, parachain or private chains. Uh, in Polkadot ecosystem. Uh, but that's not the entire specter of possibilities. Uh, those parachains can uh, be used for any purposes. They're pretty easy to build. Uh, they have very good documentation. And uh, this is one of the reasons why we uh, chose those. Uh, but let's uh, dive deeper. And uh, let's see what requirements of uh, framework uh, choice we had. So first of all, uh, the framework had to allow us to decentralize the validators. Uh, decentralization means that there's no singular point of failure because there's no center. There are multiple centers. Uh, distributed means uh, there are not only multiple centers, uh, but all the nodes are equally important. And by uh, putting down one of the node, nodes you don't uh, you as a, an adversary uh, don't solve any uh, problem because all the rest is still available still talking to each other and the chain is still running uh, this framework has to be self-consistent meaning uh, it shouldn't rely on uh, external uh, libraries of frameworks um, this is important because um, we didn't want to rely on something that may change in the future and uh, may impact uh, in a bad way uh, what we are developing. It has to be modular because when it's modular, you can uh, develop, uh, test and install modules independently of each other, um, which helps to uh, improve and maintain uh, the library. It has to be upgradable meaning after we launch it if we decide to add more features or uh, we find some um, inconsistent work we will be able to uh, change it it must be secure uh, so this code has to be battle tested uh, at least for several years um, it has to be resourceful meaning uh, it already solved uh, the basic problems that we are going to encounter and uh, the, it has to be efficiently solved. It has to be well documented, uh, meaning uh, the ideas behind the code must be well structured and must be explicit. So we have to quickly understand why this code is written like this, what exactly it's doing, and why it is the most efficient way of solving a problem. And support. Uh, so we also wanted um, uh, rich ecosystem uh, in case we have questions or in case something doesn't work the way it's written in the documentation. Uh, so we would ask for help and there would be people knowledgeable in this area who would uh, be able to help us. So these were the requirements uh, for a choice of framework uh, when we were making this choice. So what are the alternative uh, options that we had and why we haven't uh, went uh, with alternatives and why we eventually ended up with Substrate. Uh, so the most obvious one is EVM. Uh, there are many blockchains uh, based on uh, Ethereum GIF or, GIF or uh, Go Ethereum. Uh, however, uh, there were multiple hacks, multiple security breaches. Uh, it's not modular. So basically you have to write your changes directly in the code of a node. And uh, there aren't many docs about writing nodes in Ethereum. Uh, there are many docs how to write Solidity, how to use it, uh, but not so many uh, docs about uh, why this or that code is written like this. Um, the rules of writing code, different parts of the code, uh, there isn't much documentation about it. Uh, another platform that we uh, studied was Solana, uh, which is written in Rust. Uh, however, we figured that the maximum number of validators 
uh, it can be seven at a time. Uh, we tried uh, changing the code of the nodes. Uh, however, we didn't manage to uh, get to a number higher than seven. Uh, besides, we learned about multiple bridges. Uh, also, the code isn't modular and uh, not too many uh, developer documentations for the nodes. So we discarded this idea. Uh, EOS is uh, another blockchain. Uh, uses C++ for writing uh, its uh, node. Uh, but unfortunately, again, we found out about security breaches. A uh, very small uh, developer uh, community. And so when we uh, needed to find out some information, it was very hard to get an answer. And there are uh, sus there is a suspicion that the chain is centralized and, and the nodes uh, communicate in such a way that also suggests that potentially um, it is not suitable for a decentralized solution. So we discarded this idea. Hyperledger is a complex learning curve and uh, we also figured out that it's hardware resource intensive. So um, to, for, for the people uh, to be able to run our nodes, they'll have to buy expensive equipment and it will be hard for us to write the code. So we refused from using this. Uh, Corda is again a complex learning curve. Uh, it is specialized in fungible token uh, tra uh, transactions, not non-fungible tokens, token transaction. And again, it also has a small uh, developer community. And uh, so again, we saw that if we encounter problems, we would be on our own, and which wasn't nice. Uh, another pl uh, platform is uh, Tezos. Uh, we used to run a validator of Tezos. It's called a Baker, and uh, we were overwhelmed with the complex upgrades of the Baker, which happened pretty often, sometimes uh, once a month. Uh, the documentation, unfortunately, turned out to be outdated, especially about the uh, node nodes. Um, so sometimes when we had to upgrade the, the Baker, um, the documentation didn't provide the right steps we had to take and it was hard, but we needed to ask for help. And uh, the dev community isn't huge, not too many people know what exactly uh, should be done. And so again, we decided not to go this way. Uh, Cosmos SDK is uh, famous for uh, quick uh, solutions for building custom chains uh, with a tender mint uh, consensus. Uh, however, for our particular uh, developers, the learning curve would be uh, longer than, for example, for Substrate because we previously uh, had experience in building um, a testnet in Substrate, so we already had some experience. And eventually, Substrate, that we already had experience with, uh, had exactly everything we were looking for on our previous slide, with the requirements for a framework. So let's actually see uh, what we found in Substrate and what we had to add to implement our solution. Uh, so, uh, here are s some uh, existing palettes that we uh, used. Uh, they provided some existing solutions uh, for the problems that we encountered. And the first was a pseudo account. Uh, pseudo palette allows uh, you to have a super user, uh, which can launch uh, other things and can later be removed. Uh, then uh, another palette is called balances, which handles accounts and balances of those accounts. Uh, session. It manages epoch keys and the rotation uh, of epochs. A timestamp tracks on-chain time, which is important for the epoch rotation. A democracy uh, handles stakeholders and uh, voting. Uh, Aura uh, is a consensus handler, but we modified it for our needs. However, we didn't have to write it from scratch. We used some existing code. Uh, Grandpa is a consensus finality handler. We also used some existing code base. However, we modified it at least a little bit. Um, so smart contract network, it's not actually a palette, it's um, a crate. Uh, however, we are using existing crate, uh, which we slightly modified by 
exposing some of the variables. Um, this, this is required uh, for a private uh, network uh, between the validators. And uh, there is a number of pallets that we uh, developed ourselves. Uh, so the first pallet is Frost, uh, responsible for group key generation and distributed threshold signatures. Uh, claims. Uh, it's like a hash map uh, which stores the NFTs users can claim and some related logic uh, required for interacting with this hash map. A cluster allows uh, the validators to be elected in the active cluster. Um, it estimates their reputation and uh, has other logic related to uh, election of the validators and to the voting validators from potential validators. Uh, collection is a palette uh, responsible for mapping native and wrapped contracts. Uh, by native contracts, we mean the contracts where NFTs were originally minted. Uh, wrapped contracts hold NFTs from other chains, from foreign chains. Uh, so these four are already developed and we're still in the process of developing, so maybe uh, the list will be longer as we go. Uh, so these are, these are the reasons why we uh, selected Substrate out of other frameworks. And this is how we uh, used the existing code base and uh, built our logic using the existing code base. That's it. Thank you for watching. Don't forget to subscribe and not to miss our future videos and to track our uh, technology. Uh, see you next week. Bye.